Hey Internet, welcome back to the Easy Writing Channel. I'm Zach. And I'm Emma. We're going to change the seat on the rocket. Let's talk about why. So this is the Touring Edition seat that comes with the rocket. It is relatively comfortable, uh, all things considered, especially at the driver position. For really long distances though, the pillion position doesn't offer as much support as Emma would like. Coming from the Goldwing that we had, Opal's back seat was wider than this seat is. The narrowness of this seat means that it's hard for me to sit square on it. I'm either hanging off one side or the other, and that's uncomfortable after long distances. Zach learned a trick. He learned that you don't have to take off the saddlebags in order to access the screws that take off the seat. So I've removed the three screws that take off the seat so that we can take a look at the underside of the pan just to see what it's going to look like after we get the uh, seat back from Russell Daylong. So here in about a month we'll send this whole seat in to their company and they will build the new seat on top of this pan. So the existing foam will all disappear and they'll actually build a new structure off of this pan to support the additional foam that is going to surround uh, and expand the current seat. So there's two options for sending in your seat. You can either mail it in like we've chosen to do, or you could drive yourself all the way to Shasta, California, which is in Northern California, and do a one day stop and go thing. You Where they'll actually, they build the seat in a day and they have you sit on it and sort of adjust it and massage it into your shape. As uh, they go along. Yeah. Which with, you can actually get uh, with the mail-in version, but I think it's a one-time send it back and have them adjust something and send it back before it starts costing you additional, so. Yeah. There's lots of options that you can choose for your seat. And we'll go through those once we get on the website. The home page, uh, it's just day-long.com. And when you start your order, there's a whole bunch of different places that you need to gather information from on their website uh, in order to get your order placed. And first is the reference chart to find out what price code you fall into. So ours for the Triumph Rocket 3 is, is S3. the S3 price code. Then the second place you need to go to is the prices S3, a vinyl seat, a vinyl dual seat, $800. There's a lot of different options and different pricing structure based on what it is exactly that you want to do. They have a tips page, which uh, this will actually tell you the sort of photographs that they request that you take when you send in your order so that they know, have a better idea of your body shape, your riding position, and how to build the seat for you based on those pieces of information. So lots of lots of information there about all of that. It was funny that my sister saw one of the photos of Zach and I riding on the rocket down the street uh, that our daughter had taken and she chastised me because I was not wearing any gear because you're not supposed to wear gear whenever you're taking these photos and you're not supposed to wear dark colors and stuff and so I had to quickly explain to her that no no no, no. we were like literally doing two miles an hour if that cruising by our daughter so she could take a picture of us. <laughs> the order form where you Enter all of your information, uh, including your height and weight, all the bike information, anything that you've modified on it that they need to take into account. Uh, the price code that you collected earlier, whether you're doing a solo or duo, duo, all the different options that you've selected, this is where you include all of that, uh, uh, as well as all the check marks for all of that stuff here. So then you can tell them how you're sending in your photos, whether you do it with email, which is how we did it, or you can upload them here. You can put in the payment information, but they don't actually take it at the time that you send in this order form. Like Zach and I were looking all over for it and stuff, and it wasn't until I think it's three days, or they give you about three days, and they'll contact you back and give you an estimated shipping date and time, and they'll be like, hey, this is when we have next availability. This is when we'd like to have your seat by. 
and here's how much it's going to cost. And then if you accept all of that, then they move forward with your order. And the, the cost doesn't, you, you don't pay until they have it complete, and I think you pay before they send it back. So far, it's been really smooth working with the company. Zach's had to call a couple of times because once we, we started the ordering process and we started with leather, and then once we figured out that vinyl was what we actually wanted, we quickly called back and said, hey, can we change this? And they're like, no problem. That's easily enough done. So there are a number of options when you are doing a custom seat for a bike. Corbin is one of the more common options. I saw a concerning number of quality control and aftercare issues with the Corbin service. I don't know how found those, founded those are, I've not actually done it myself, but everything that I've heard about or read about for the Russell Daylong has been nothing but glowing praise. So. Also with the Corbin seating, you can't adjust the size of the seat. The shape that your stock seat is, is the shape that they can work with. So they can't add or they don't add the additional support structure for the pillion. And that was the main concern. It's not that Zach is uncomfortable in his seat, it's that I'm uncomfortable in my seat. So we needed to find a company that was going to be able to accommodate making my seat more comfortable and something that I'm going to enjoy on longer rides. And if all you're looking to do is customize the look of your existing seat without changing its shape much, that's actually something you can do at, at local upholstery shops uh, to wherever you're at. That's, so we're actually building a uh, backrest for the seat separate from the um, Russell Daylong. So I'm here at Guy's uh, local upholstery shop. I'm about to drop off the backrest that uh, I made that he's gonna cover. Just wanted to do a quick shot of what it looks like before it gets covered up. So I've got a, uh, what was it, uh, 3 8 inch, maybe close to half an inch uh, HDPE backing, um, threaded inserts that I added for uh, the connection point to the existing backrest, and then the foam padding that uh, between Emma and I we worked out what she liked. I actually would have preferred a higher density foam than what I got here um, with a little less thickness, but this is what we got, uh, what I could find. So uh, I, I made it a little thicker to compensate for the fact that it's going to compress more because it's not quite as dense as I would like. So I'll get this dropped off to Guy. Uh, he'll get it covered and uh, we'll see it when it's all done. Stand this up. Okay, as you can see how much higher it is. So again, this is the bottom or the top of the old backrest. And you can see just how much taller it hits me. All right, I'm gonna goose it. We'll see how it pushes you into that seat. All right. <laughs> So you've had a little bit of a ride, first time out with the new back. What do you think? Initial thoughts are, are uh, I'm happy with it. So the day has come to send our seat to Russell, Russell Daylong. Day. A box sufficient to the task of shipping a full seat is not particularly easy to come by. So doorbell's just gone off. Let's go see what we got. Big box. Okay, let's see what we got.
papers. Congratulations, break in, posture, sheepskin beads, keep it dry, sitting position, keep it clean. A serial number. Nice. Comfort guarantee, comfort adjustment versus a modification. Apparently there's some sort of difference there. Invoice. Seat. <laughs> that's a lot of shredded cardboard. Probably some of it could even be what we sent them. I bet that's a good way to use the random packaging people send them. Newspaper, bubble wrap. Looks nice. Yeah, it does. Stepping on bubble wrap. It should fit. Come around. That looks great. <laughs> Look at that. Looks cool. I can't wait to get on it. Okay, we'll get it tightened down and uh, give it a ride and tell you what we think. All right, first ride, first impressions on the new seat. We just got the seat today and um, already I, I love it just from the aspect of it covers all of my backside. It covers down to my thighs. I don't have any hang off on either side or the other. Um, it is still really firm because the uh, seat is going to take between 500 and 1,000 miles to get broken in, they said, on the paperwork that we got. And so because of that, whenever we first sat on it, like Zach first sat on it, and he can't put his feet flat on the ground right now. He's like up on the balls of his feet. Um, and but that they was said... When, yeah. They said in the in the documentation that the front edge, specifically where your thighs go over the edge of the seat, is extra supportive, and that will break in very quickly. Where your you'll you'll your foot position on the ground will change. So Emma says that, and she is a little uncomfortable proclaiming it out loud, but <laughs> there's some extra pressure on her taint. <laughs> There's a, there's a definite ridge line down the middle of your sit spot area and it separates things for sure. There's more rigidity there right now. But again, that will break in um, over the course of, the, of getting a, a ride on it. But I already feel so much more secure on this seat than I did on the stock seat. Also, this seat has different shape than the Goldwing back seat. Opal's back seat was much more rectangular shaped and this one is definitely shaped more like a tractor seat. It's not straight across the back of your thighs. It kind of angles down your thighs and follows the line of your leg as you are back seat pillion with your legs around your driver. So it's it's definitely like right now before it's broken in, I have to scoot forward to uh, to get my feet firmly planted on the ground at a stop. But the uh, the site does say specifically that it was going to lift your ride height by an inch and a half to two inches, and that'll break in some over time. You'll get a little bit of that back after it breaks in. So. I think it's just going to take a little getting used to and it breaking in, but it's very a very comfortable seat to ride in. 
it's uh it's it very supportive all over so the paperwork also said that they made like a natural cup for your bum and so your bottom will naturally want to slide forward or back to kind of fall into that cupping area that they made in the shop for you based on your size and shape and pictures and information that you sent so initial first thoughts are positive um, I I am enjoying the seat and uh, it looks great with the uh, yes. diamond pattern on there yes looks great the vinyl is nice and soft I don't feel like I have to shift my weight from one side to the other significantly. I feel like I'm sitting nice and square in the saddle. The documentation has a lot of verbiage around um, making sure that uh, you understand that it has a break-in period and that it has, uh, if, if there's something not right about it, that they want a chance to correct that before you go and um, seek some way to change it or a refund or whatever the case may be. They, they want opportunities to make that correct. So uh, I think they stand behind their work, which is a, a good thing from a consumer point of view. So our initial thoughts are all positive and I don't think we've got a whole lot else that we can say before we have some break-in. So in future videos we'll, we'll, we'll mention what we think of it as we uh, get some more seat time. Here's, the, here's a look at the new seat from behind. You can see that there's not any kind of... Uh, hang off and it goes further down my thighs on each side it's got good support sitting on the seat you can see that it crushes down just a little bit on the wings right there this part crushes down just a bit but he's got a nice lifter jacket a nice like almost small backrest on the back there which is nice. And then, I don't know if we need to mention it or not, but you can see that he can't flat foot. Not without coming forward from the yeah. bike. But they said that the front part of the seat. Yeah, specifically will, this area here will crush down more, giving your legs back closer to where they flat foot normally. So. Russell Daylong didn't sponsor this video. It wasn't sponsored. The, uh, we paid nearly $1,000 for this seat after shipping and tax. And if I have some critiques, it's of the service, not the product. Uh, the communication was thin and infrequent. You, it, they're not gonna hold your hand through the process. They're not gonna tell you where they're at uh, in production and where, how long things are gonna take, stuff like that. It's, you send it in and then Three weeks later they ask you for payment and send it back uh, if you don't initiate conversation there's not going to be any and if you're looking for a change in your seat and that change is only to replace the existing padding or just to change the look of the top the the material or the stitching i would suggest that you find your local upholstery shop to do that it'll be less expensive and you'll be supporting local uh, but if you need to do something to change the pan, this is this is a, a good service. So here's the future rides. <laughs>